Yes, hello everybody and good morning also from my side. Um, my name is Roger, I'm the product manager uh, for the land business here in Reichle de Massari, Switzerland, in the headquarter. And um, I'm glad to talk about the digital ceiling for building automation today, give you a short introduction. This topic is mainly linked to power over Ethernet because the most obvious application is illumination, which is uh, connected with LED lights. This is a kind of new application, of course, and um, IP networks need to be ready for this upcoming thing. Some uh, manufacturers, they also call that digital ceiling or digital building or just distributed building services or even connected lighting, that depends a bit. So to give you a short overview, what we're going to um, discuss today is you, you will find a, <coughs> a content here on the screen now, the development of the POE. And then we are uh, striving the digital building concept. We will also have some information about the standards, what they describe a possible digital ceiling solution and our proposal for a digital ceiling cabling. Uh, let's start with the development of the POE. Well, it all started with as little as 15 watts uh, and uh, a pair of um, the Ethernet cabling to, to actually distribute the, the power. And um, it ends up nowadays with uh, four pairs. So the full Ethernet cable is used for power over Ethernet support and it will distribute the, um, the power over these four pairs to the requested receiver. That can be up to 90 watts and that's um, quite a lot. So nowadays there are some um, computers even, for instance, some, some internet kiosk or so, they are working with that. Um, and that's a, a quite interesting application depending on um, your location, of course. So let's move on actually into the um, main thing, I'd say, uh, the support for the four pair power over Ethernet, which is built on basically three pillars, as you can see here in this wheel. Um, this is one of, one of the most important things, of course, is the the, the contact design, so the connectivity spark erosion that could appear, especially with um, unplugging under load. Another pillar is the IDC termination and the power save. And the third pillar is the planning. Planning has been the most, uh, I'd say, neglected probably in the past uh, because um, it was not relevant. And now it becomes relevant how big the bundle is, how long the actual link is in order to have a um, device powered at the end of this link. So when when we are looking at this from, from Reichle, we, we always say it's important that you consider all these aspects. Uh, some of them, of course, the, the planner can take well care of, which is the planning, but the rest has to be taken care of by, of course, the manufacturer. So that's why we focus not only on the design, but also on the termination. Uh, we, believe that IPC connections are not sufficient over time because the inner resistance will increase. So the IDC in this regard is the perfect choice for four pair PoE because it's actually consistent in its resistancy. It will not alter and will therefore stabilize your connection. Um, our products are equipped with IDC technology, IDC technology and we have introduced a so-called power safe uh, quality seal that you can see on this little reel here inside and um, this will 
tell you that the product was designed and optimized for power over ethernet and has some idcs inside this ensures a long-term and reliable connection we are actually the only supplier that supports the idc also on the patch cords so the rg45 patch cord that you will buy is with a IDC termination inside. So what's the impact then for the cabling? Well, due to the resistance increase um, because of the heat, there will be significant heat dissipation necessary and the, the actual length could be shortened due to that because heat uh, increases the resistance meaning there is, is less distance you can cover um, this is actually really important in case of a, um, a field distributor where you put your your devices that need to power the uh, remote um, devices so it's important that you consider this and that you plan this thoroughly not only the bundle size but also the distribution and of course the cabling that you choose is important too because we found out that the heat dissipation is much better with shielded cables for instance than with unshielded cables because the foil inside which is mainly aluminum, is a better conductor for the heat than uh, no um, conductor at all or the, the air. So with a shielded cable, you will get better results in terms of heat dissipation. Heat increases, of course, and the temperature could be trapped inside some big cable bundles. So the infrared of a 37 cable bundle used with PoE plus, you can see here on the screen, and you can see there is significant heat within the cabling bundle. And hotter cables, as I already explained, will give a higher resistance and therefore a higher attenuation. And this attenuation budget must be maintained over the link in order to actually determine how long the permanent link or the fixed installation can finally be. So that's why uh, we provide an Excel sheet so you can actually calculate the bundle size and the length it will give you some useful hints depending on on your bundles that you have across the installation within the building this means you will have um, an opportunity not only to calculate but also to estimate the distances and to distribute your in-house cabling or your service outlets we will talk about the service outlets a little later so um, yeah this this is a this is a quite helpful sheet um, we we also provide several other sheets for calculating. So since this is an own, only an introduction, I'm not going in depth into these sheets, but once we will have a full seminar together, we will then uh, go into these sheets and make some sample calculations so that you can uh, try it that yourself and um, of course get used to it in the meantime if you want of course feel free to visit our website and, and check it out there however i continue and move on to the impact of this contact resistance on the temperature uh, the contact resistance acts like a, a valve for the current and that's depicted here in, with this um, symbol as you can see the higher the resistance of course the smaller the gap so this means um, we have checked and made some fem in, uh, simulations with a, a piercing contact and we wanted to see what's the increase inside this um, actual uh, contact uh, duty power over ethernet so these are the curves that you can see here for the different types or levels of power over Ethernet, starting with uh, 15 watts, uh, 
light blue going up to 90 watts with the dark red. And as you can see, these different curves already indicate that there is a, a significant difference between these applications. So measuring the temperature increase in the middle of a plug in general is a tricky thing. Um, quite well, we found it hardly impossible to really um, achieve. So that's why we have chosen the FEM analysis. Using this, we made some uh, calculations and that's what we are going to talk about now. As you can see now in the graph, the ambient temperature of the 45 degrees is derived from a patch cord used in the data center cabinet in a hot ale. So a temperature increase to continuous use um, and its temperature is only 35 degrees, but for an ambient temperature of 45 degrees. Um, this means in, in an IPC plug, 100 milliohms are reached very quickly, as you can see here um, on, the, on, this, on this graph. So if there is an increase in the resistance, this immediately has a severe impact on the temperature increase within these cabling. The cabling norms and standard, they say 60 degrees is the maximum you, you should uh, actually have within the cable to be on the safe side. Well, that's, that's okay for the cabling, of course, but in the, in the actual um, like like this this little um, tiny little spot where you where you have the the connection between the cable and the, the contact of a plug this this can significantly increase because the resistance is much higher there and then you might reach the melting point of the material around which is mainly plastic polycarbonate and once you reach that, of course, it might have an impact on the stability of the contact because an increase does not mean a, a fail immediate, but it's over time start to shake probably. And uh, eventually we, we've seen also some melted plugs. Um, that's, that's the worst case scenario, of course, but it may happen. And this is what we want to stress here. You have to consider things like that. And that's why we believe that the IDC is the better contact if it comes to uh, a, a plug as well. And that's why we provide patch cords with IDCs, which are uh, resistance stable even in the over time with, with the age of the cable. Have a look on the zone cabling, which is described quite nicely in these two norms that you can see on top here in the title bar. Uh, however, it's it's fairly old in terms of the radius. As you can see, they suggest some service outlets which are distributed within a building. These uh, two bars here, they actually they um, symbolize a wall, and you, you you see like a honeycomb these these actual uh, zones with the service outlets. This radius of 12 meter though is based on a rather old Wi-Fi standard of four, uh, 54 megabits. Nowadays we are much much slower, uh, much um, uh, smaller. Uh, since we are going into Wi-Fi 6, this is tremendously smaller. However, um, this is what's, what's still in the standards and many of the buildings not even uh, have or provide this sort of service outlet in, in the ceiling or on the floor. So with the upcoming new technologies like LED lights, or other devices connecting to the internet, the IoT, 
trend, you will have not enough service outlets available because most of the time, as I said, there is not even a service outlet because it was not considered up and building the, um, uh, or up and construction of the building. So um, what's, what's important is to consider this nowadays in case you will go into such technologies. The actual principle is, is quite easy. You, you will have a service outlet which is basically consisting of some, some 230 volts plus some LAN um, outlets and this combined makes the service outlet where you connect from the floor distributor to the actual let's say wireless access point or even a light a led light so the switch which is capable of poe will then provide the power through the normal ethernet cabling to this particular um, device that you want to connect there are several um, uh, philosophies, of course. Um, I'm not going to cover all of them, but um, the one which is probably quite common or obvious nowadays is having a floor distributor, then the switch inside, and then you have a, a bunch of cables going out to the ceiling, and there you have probably the lights and everything else. So when, when you look at the, the picture now on the screen, you, you will see the evolution for what we call of a digital building, which looks a little different than you probably know. So we will not um, have, or we, we do not really promote these, these kind of application to be set forth as, as described before with a floor distributor where you have the the actual power of Ethernet switch. Much more sensible uh, or sense makes the installation if there is a power over Ethernet switch for the lights close to the lights next to the service outlet, for instance, because then you have quite short distances to the light and you will not have the problem with, with all the bundles that you have to calculate running through the building and heating up. However, uh, both solutions, of course, are possible. Um, that's a matter of philosophy and also of, of course, of the, of the techniques that you, that you finally choose. But the idea of the digital building in general is that you will have probably a generic cabling that exists. You will have some power over Ethernet occasional devices. And now with the service outlet in the digital ceiling, you will not only have the possibility to connect a, a power switch for, for lights, but you can also connect some other things like the blinds of a window or, or some other detectors like a moving detector or whatsoever, especially with the upcoming single pair Ethernet standard. With single Ethernet, um, you will quadruple the the amount uh, of, of devices immediately because as it says by its name it uses a single pair only. A single pair is usually enough for a the blinds you know or even for light. I mean there is not a lot of data traffic coming from a lamp um, in general and you might be able to to control switch on switch off and some other things with with uh, 10 or 100 megabit by far however it's not possible of course with fiber optics since you need to distribute the power um, common led panels nowadays they they use about 30 watts so that's quite easy to uh, hook up to, to a switch uh, which provides several times these 30 watts and it's really designed depending on the manufacturer of course to, to be fanless and to be high power with um, these, these outlets and all the outlets of the switch they are really powered and there is no 
no um, special uh, um, things you have to incorporate like uh, oh, which port is is really delivering power over the ethernet is it enough uh, because there is always a so-called um, depot like a, like a maximum of mount the switch can can cover which is with some regular not uh, really designed for 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 illumination or so switches it's it's quite limited so here you you have to take care of the the proper of course uh, the devices that you connect so to sum up basically this is the idea of the of the service outlet and of the digital billing depicted here with a picture that's how it could look like i would say this is probably the the minimum that you that you should provide which is some, some power outlets one or two depending on what you're going to connect but some power is necessary usually at the service outlet and at least some two times 10 gigabit um, ethernet uplinks one mainly used probably for the wireless access point and one for a zone switch for instance and with the wi-fi 6 that applies nowadays it's um, advisable to use a 10 gig because the net bandwidth theoretically with wi-fi 6 is over 10 gig already so in the upcoming future we will of course um, see some some massive changes there i believe and with the introduction of some distributed antenna systems with the uh, generation 5 standard of of the mobile network we will also see some smaller cells and necessary sometimes to to have some in-house cells so the zone cabling within a building will become more and more important in general for whatever application and i think it is advisable to consider this and to to properly take care of that when you're planning the building already of course always uh, together with the building owner but in general uh, we, we can sum up and say um, it's it's crucial to have no matter where some service outlets and it makes sense to have them in um, let, let's say at least as, as small as 12 meter radius to be future ready so that everything that's coming up can be connected in the future yeah that's it from my side i hope um, this was somehow interesting for you this little appetizer and i would look forward of course to see you hopefully after this pandemic thing in person in one of our workshops thanks for your attention